one. Here's the full court press. We'll see that this afternoon from Providence, full and three-quarter court pressure. As Arizona... And then they drop man-to-man -man and play very aggressive man-to-man. -man. So they get after you defensively all the time. Off it finds Williams. He lobs into Womack. And puts it in. Well, Wayne Womack at 6'8 is played in that four position for Sean Rooks at 6'11. So Arizona does give up a little height. Simpkins shot won't make it. Follows up, though. And a foul inside on Bragg. Marquise Bragg. Well, Bragg's a tough player now. Uh, Providence along the front line is about 6'8 and 6'9 uh, with uh, Simpkins. And he's a good-looking freshman. Bragg is more powerful, not a finesse player underneath. Uh, they use him for rebounding and defensive play, but he leads the nation in field goal shooting, so he's contributing. And once again, the full-court press. Williams, and they break it over to Mills. And to Mulebach. Oppik from three. And Watts with the rebound. Murdoch. Like laying an ornament on a Christmas tree, Murdoch stops short, puts it in. He's and the only starter back, David, from that uh, NCAA participating team last year of Providence. I saw him in the NCAA regionals. He played the off guard then, but he's scoring much better this year. Bragg with a foul again. And see Murdoch, not only known for his stealing, but also his scoring. He led the Big East in scoring last year, stopped at the bottom of the circle, penetrated well, put it in, and that gave Providence a 5-4 lead with 17 minutes remaining here in the first half. Well, he's 6-2 and a great anticipator. And he does it again. Murdoch took advantage of Arizona's poor pass, and Othick draws the foul. He's a great anticipator. A lot of people feel he doesn't have the great quickness or speed to get all the steals he does, but he anticipates what's happening on the court. Has a great feel for the game of basketball. And as you indicated, leads the nation. He has a chance to set the NCAA career steal record this year. All he needs is 47 more steals, and he's got one there, so he's down to 46. That's about three a game for the rest of the year, and he will be the new NCAA steal career record holder. All right, with his first free throw, Murdoch puts Providence two points ahead of Arizona with 17.51 remaining in the first half. Murdoch's 36 for 37. That's 37 for 38 in his last three ball games. Womack secures it for Arizona. Offick. Dribbling against Murdoch. That's got to put some additional pressure on Arizona's guards. Williams fires it inside, and it's a 6-6 time. That's the big advantage that Arizona has, but of course Providence plays against Georgetown and Syracuse and just about everybody they play in the Big East is bigger than they are. Basket made by Tony Brown, Troy Brown make it. He's from Lynn, Massachusetts, 6'8", 213 pound forward. He's a freshman, they've got three freshmen. In fact, a lot of people rate their freshman class, four freshmen they recruited is about the 20th or 22nd in the nation. Womack with a fake and a drive. Williams battered around a little bit inside. We'll see who draws the foul. Could have been any one of three Friars. Three, four, move, two. It's on Brown, his first personal. And the first substitution into the ball game, checking in for Providence is Tony Turner. Here's Womack. Good baseline, strong move, and jumps in away from the basket to pick up the foul if he doesn't get the shot. Williams was surrounded, goes to the line. And he pulls Arizona within one of the fires, 8-7. Providence leads. Not quite three minutes gone yet here in the Williams first shooting half. shooting 74%. That's what you'd like from your big guys. He's going to be on the line a lot. Tied again. And now three minutes have passed. Providence, a very young team out there right now. Oh, shot missed by the new man, Tony Turner. And controlled finally by Williams. And Offick will bring it across to Mills from three. Well, they say it's a two-point shot. He had his, boy, just by his toes, he was over the line. Arizona with a two-point lead. Watts has it stuffed by Womack. And here's Offick. 
Back to Muehlbach, can't lay it in. Murdoch with the rebound, brings it back across. You notice somebody picking up Murdoch all the time. That time it was Mills. Now Othick's back on him. Watts from three, he cans it again. Second three-point shot. Well, he's probably a key because he's not been a great shooter this year. He's been having a tough year, but they did start him today. He's really better for three-point range than he is from two-point range. Williams for two, and he makes it. Four minutes gone, the Wildcats with a one-point lead, and this sellout crowd looking for another Arizona home win is already treated to a first half they haven't seen here for a while. Mills to Offic. Arizona's hit a couple perimeter shots. And the Wildcats turn it over. And guess, who's a, guess who has the basketball? Great anticipation again by Murdoch. Doubling down on the post. Watts with no trepidations about shooting the tray. Well, I'll tell you, Coach, that one time, I believe that time Watts is ready from a gunning from a three-point NBA shot. Pretty good pressure on the ball. Muehlbach does the same thing. He can hit it. Simpkins. And Providence turns it over. Mills to Muehlbach. To Williams, and he overshoots him. You know, this is a real up and down game and a little higher tempo than Arizona usually plays, so maybe that's a result of many of the turnovers. All right, well, both teams want to go into their respective corners and take a gas. We've got 15.03 remaining in the first half, and the Wildcats lead it by one. Game of horse in your backyard. Well, Watts let Muehlbach shoot from half mile away. I guess Matt gets the H so far. Well, he does. He's only shooting 26% from free point range. Uh, also, he's not the, he shoots less than anybody else on the Arizona basketball team, so... I think Travis is going to force him to score. Here's a high post rub they like to use. Murdoch's going to have the ball a lot. Gets it across the way. Ball moving as quickly in this building right now as had in a year as Gilbach lays it in at the other end. Arizona has a three-point lead. Well, great job again by Mulebach, who does that as well as anybody. Campbell's shot doesn't go. But a foul... You know, another thing in the Big East Conference, they're used to playing with six fouls, so that might be a factor in this ball game. Uh, as aggressive as it has been early, Providence already picked up a lot of fouls compared to Arizona. I don't think Arizona has a foul yet. It's four to one in team fouls. Now just a single man-to-man -man press by Forbes in at the point. Dickie Simpkins picked up his first foul for the Friars. Brooks leaves it out to Deron Johnson off the bench. Won't go. Ball brought back up by Forbes. Offit reached in and got caught trying to take one away from Murdoch. Well, they're really playing tough on Murdoch. They feel that's the key of the ball game. And so far, uh, Offit with two fouls. They want to keep Murdoch from the ball. Pretty tough to score if you can't get your hands on it. But they do a lot of things to get him free, to free him up and get him the basketball. Ed Stokes checks into the ball game for the Wildcats. He replaces Wayne Womack. We'll explain that black singlet band on Arizona's uniforms in just a moment. There's been a passing in the Arizona athletic family. Murdoch challenges off, uh, Muehlbach rather, beats him inside but misses the layoff. Maybe scared a little bit by the big guy in there, but he took it to the hoop very, very well. Muehlbach for Arizona. Here comes Rooks. They won't go, but a foul will be charged to the account of Fred Campbell, the freshman from the Salisbury, North Carolina. The Wildcats now, Coach, going inside where they, they've had sweet repose all year. Well, they are. What Providence is doing is they're bringing over the weak side forward to two-time right there quickly. He gets a little too close. Occasionally, they drop the guard. They're going to double down on that Arizona post play. So Arizona, as the ball game goes along, will try to get it inside and then get it right back outside for those short jumpers. Which makes the first one. You saw the black uh, band on Arizona's uniforms. That's for Frankie Gutierrez. For 16 years, he was a mainstay around McHale Center, working in the equipment department for the Wildcats. And it was Sean Rooks at Frankie's passing requesting that the team put the black bands on. So it was the players who asked for it. Frankie was there yesterday. Murdoch thought he had drawn a foul. Not the case. Forbes with it, working on Reeves. Way 
have missed, but fouled and missed again. Murdoch comes in to get it. He'll finally be fouled. And it's going to be Khalid Reeves who is charged. Reeves, the young man from New York, tell you what, 16 minutes per game so far just as a freshman. You're impressed right here with a good aggressive play by Providence. Now, they play in the Big East where the board play is really tough, and they play against 6'10 and 7-footers in that Georgetown and Syracuse outfit. So, again, their impressive play on the offensive board. They're crashing with four people. They're vulnerable if Arizona can get the board and get it out, but they really recover rapidly, and that could be a factor. Their offensive board play here early and the perimeter shooting. They've got to shoot better outside to beat Arizona. Murdoch draws Providence within three with 13-19 remaining in the first half. Make it the Wildcats by two, 15-13. And Reeves is fouled this time. The foul will be charged to Tony Turner. I believe that is Turner's second. Well, that's another young player, a sophomore, but they have about eight or nine people to play. Remember, they're, they're missing three people. And with the style of play they play, it's important that you have a deep bench. And they've got three very good people at home. Their starting point guard, Boy, a great steal by Murdoch. That's three in the ballgame already. That's over his average, and it results in a basket. That's where most of his offense is generated. And the Wildcats do it a second time. You know, before we started this ballgame, we took a look at how the two teams competed or compared, and the turnovers was the major difference. And two in a row by the Wildcats, although Muehlbach has a chance to avenge one of them. And uh, Great protection by Matt Muehlbach again. They work the ball inside to Marquise Brown. He's fouled as he shoots. Well, he's great and strong. The report on it, he was scouting for it. Not very good offensive player. A good garbage player, strong inside. And leads the nation in field goal shooting at 83%. For career, he's been shooting 61%. So most of his shots are right where we're going to see him here down deep. But look at this finish by Matt Muehlbach, 6'2", Arizona senior captain. Very, very good on the break. A key for Arizona today, no doubt, will be their fast break, the transition game, the transition basket after they threw one away. There's Bragg at the line, and nothing to boast about as he misses his first field goal. And if you're wondering if he's going to make any free throws, he makes about one out of three. So he's a good person to foul. Took dead aim at that, missed again. They're going to bring Mills back into the ball game for Duran Johnson. Or let's see. Yes, it will be Duran Johnson taking the seat. Full court press. Well, the Wildcats are turning the ball over, but as you see, Providence in foul trouble early today. The ball tipped in by Stokes after Reeves. Send it around the bucket. And Muehlbach gets one now. All by himself. Well, we've talked about Murdoch quite a bit at the top of the show, but here's a guy, too, that has great anticipation. Here's a special play, a preset now for Murdoch. They're going to double screen for him and bring him off the top. Wildcats with a six-point advantage. Murdoch drives, and they're going to say it goes. Yes. When you watch the point guard from uh, Providence pat the top of his head, that means they're going to set a double screen for Murdoch. Boy, they say so much about his defensive skills. Look at this. With Reeves all over. Well, he's got the good strength. He's 6'2", about 195 or 98 pounds. An outstanding prospect. Nominated for the Wooden Award. That's for the top 50 basketball players in the country and the finalists for that particular award at the end of the year. And Arizona fans are familiar with that because Sean Elliott won it a couple of years ago. So that's the kind of player he is. 37 points in his last outing and well on his way to get 20 here tonight. Troy Brown checks back into the ball game for Brown as Murdoch tries to make it a three-point play. And he does. So we're going to take a timeout. 11.58 remains in the first half. The Wildcats with a three-point edge. We'll be right back. St. Nicholas made his way into the arena today. He's got a busy night coming up on uh, Monday. Change their press now. They don't play about the guy out of bounds. They keep changing things on you. Give you a different look. Reeves to Rooks. Back out to Reeves. And Mills. From three. 
Well, Mills has been taking and making most of Arizona's three-pointers so far this season. Well, he's having that kind of game he's capable of having. You never know when he's going to bust out of it. They tie it up. Brown and Stokes. Brown's a young freshman. Four outstanding freshmen on this college basketball team. Arizona with two outstanding freshmen. You don't want to disparage Western Illinois or Marathon Oil, but the fans seem to be into this one a little bit more than the previous two home games here. Shot made in the corner, a three-pointer by Forbes. Well, it's not a heavy score. You know, the record starting point guard is not here, but the Forbes averaging about five points a game. But there you saw Murdoch penetrate, kick it off. Basketball to Simpkins level. Stokes turns and it won't go for him. Simpkins with the rebound. Forbes into the front court and to Murdoch. Simpkins working out at the low post along with Rooks. Three-pointer won't go by Murdoch. Reeves from Mills back to Mills. And that time the little guy got in trouble. Trent Forbes caught. Of course, he's a sophomore. He's out of the East. They have another point guard by the name of uh, Boyd, averaging 10 points a game out of Hutchison Junior College. He's taken over for Screen, who was a very good point guard last year. So this is a very young team. One starter back, although Watts did start 11 ball games for them last year. Wildcats now two of their three Skyline members, so to speak, as Williams checks back into the ball game. Also, Reeves out along with Stokes. Rooks misses the shot. Providence gets the call. And Arizona with a three-point lead, 10.45 remaining in the first half. Rooks 65% for the free throw line. Gothic almost got caught. Murdoch hangs one from the free throw line, makes it. And he jumped into the defense. So you see the great body management control that he has, the strong body he has an Othic, much stronger than Matt Othic. He just moved his body in through and got the open shot. Cats break the pass. The shot is blocked from behind. An outstanding play by Trent Forbes. Just a moment ago, he was called for a foul, trying to get a ball from Rooks. That time, he took one away from Mills from behind. Off pick from three. And a foul is going to be charged on Williams on the rebound. That's another thing we've noticed during the ball game. But Providence does a great job of screening out. They're not as big now, but here's Williams at 6'11", 246. Good screen out job, so he has to go over the back. Here's the pat on the head. That means Murdoch's going to get the ball someplace. There he is. Top of the key back to Forbes from three. Won't go. Back to Murdoch. Yeah, good <laughs> offensive board work. Both these teams very good on the boards. A very demonstrative team. Come on out of here. Murdoch. Back to Bragg. Right through the middle. And it won't go. He's called for the charge. And that'll hurt because that's three on him. Third personal on Bragg as we bring back into the ballgame Simpkins. Dickey back in replacing Bragg. That just means they put it, bring in some real young players to go against Arizona's experienced players. More pressure for Arizona. Mulebach with Forbes on him. Mills finds Rooks. Rooks looking for the basket. He's fouled. Well, that's pretty rough and tumble in there today. Boy, it is. And I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, uh, Providence, from where they come from, they're not giving any ground at all. Once that ball goes inside, they bring somebody over to double. Either bring the guard back down on the ball or they bring the weak side forward over to make that guy with the ball give it up pretty quick. When he puts it on the floor like that, he's liable to get in trouble, although Rooks uh, was fortunate that time he gets on the foul line. You wonder, this is the first of two Arizona Big East matchups this week. In two days, Arizona takes on Syracuse over in Honolulu. So you wonder if these two teams are getting that excited. First shot is good. In football, we're getting at. In case you're wondering, the Wildcats will take on Syracuse in the Aloha Bowl on Tuesday. They are Big East components as well. 
All right, 26-23 with under 10 minutes remaining, nine and a half. Williams finally controls it. Mills, after the pump fake, misses. Forbes with the rebound for the Friars. Boy, Brown right through the middle. Went a little bit too far. Well, big men on both clubs really run the court very well. If you're going to play that up-tempo game, that's important that you do that. Rick Barnes in his third year as the head coach of the Friars. Another steal for Murdoch, but again, he steps out of bounds. Cross-court pass over to Mulebach from Mills. Three. Matt almost threw it away. Rooks saved it. In the Mills, underneath, in. Chris Mills having a great game for Arizona. He's really been the difference. He's got nine points already for the Cats. He's had some great games during the year. And usually against good teams. Arizona, the five-point lead, making it three as Forbes hits from two. 28-25, 8-22 remaining. Forbes is a good, good point, man. That's a good quickness. He's been giving the Arizona's offense and Muehlbach a lot of trouble. Foul inside, I believe. Oh, we'll check and make sure. I think it's on Troy Brown. Got a black. Two, zero, here. Yep, it Two was on Forbes again. Trent just 6'1", 152-pound sophomore from Rossbury, Massachusetts. Has not declared his major yet. 19 fouls on Providence. If we 10 on the next one, that's two shots uh, with uh, eight minutes to go. And of course, they want to go in halftime without a lot of their people in foul trouble. Brooks at the line for the third time today, makes his third free throw. Arizona extends their lead to four points with 8.14 remaining, 29-25. Okay, really, the way Providence plays, they need that the depth off the bench because they rotate about 10 players. And Rooks makes that one that makes him five for seven from the line. Wayne Womack checks back in. They give Rooks a rest. And Arizona with a five-point cushion, just over eight minutes remaining. It's a pretty small Providence team now. A couple six fours in there. Brown at six seven, and Campbell at six seven. Then it's six two, six two, and six three. Williams takes the pass from Offick, stops short of the ten second line. Caught <laughs> everybody's attention. Mills. And the Wildcats make it a seven-point lead. That's 11 points for Mills. Mostly from the perimeter. Murdoch blocks to Forbes. Murdoch's been a little quiet. Thomas doesn't really have good balance scoring. If Murdoch doesn't have a good night, they're kind of in trouble. They go to him, and Eric can't put it in. And out of bounds to the Wildcats. We've got a timeout on the court right now. Arizona leads by seven with just over seven minutes remaining. Happy holidays, everybody. We'll be right, right back. But inspires, and they've got an advantage as well, shooting this afternoon, 54 to 33 percent, Coach. Well, that's right. Arizona, you know, has been shooting close to 50 percent all year, but the Providence has not. On the other side of the coin, defensive percentage against shooting. Murdoch again. Boy, you pay, Murdoch's going to the right. You're going to see his name in the post office real soon. Turner underneath with the two. He steals everything. You're going to have to make sure that all the benches, chairs, and the equipment here is bolted to the floor. Great anticipation. There he caused another turnover. That's Watts now 33. Pretty good quickness. Not, and I'm impressed with Forbes' quickness on the point. Yeah, going into this season, they said they had to be quick. They said they had to do things that you can't get done inside when you don't have the height to play in that Big East Conference. And so far, they're doing it. it steals, just troubling Arizona all the way around. <laughs> that was like hitting a foul ball in a baseball game. Brian Williams puts one up in the stands. They don't let you keep him in this building, but... 
Well, Arizona averaging six blocks a game. That's one of their strengths. I think Tony Turner will remember that for a while. Turner again, not bashful. Misses this time, and Muehlbein with the rebound. Off it. Williams Mills, top of the key to Muehlbach from three. And Murdoch going to take on Offic himself and win the battle. Boy, I tell you what, you talk about quickness, you just saw it. And strength. And just one on one, straight down the floor and up at the basket. Pretty tough to cover. Offic especially gives him about an inch or two and maybe 10 or 15 pounds. Murdoch with 12 points now so far today. Just over six minutes remain in the half. That's a wall. Womack. He had a great job screening out, and Williams comes up with a foul. Campbell, just a young junior ties transfer. Two, one, over the top. It was interesting. Mills put up his arm. He figured that he had the foul. Instead, they give it to Williams. But the Wildcats, as you see, they're still having problems with the turnovers, and you can spell turnover today with apologies to those of you who speak refined English, M-U-R-D-O-C-H. That's right, Arizona averaging 19 turnovers a game. Last year there were 14-3, so that's one area, but they're not as strong as they were last year. The big man really have been turning the ball over more than anybody else, and tonight we're seeing where Providence really drops in a hurry, bringing somebody over to help on those post players because of the great size advantage. Campbell. Mills finds Mielbach. Lays it out. He was looking for Womack, but Wayne did not move out of the key. The ball goes out of bounds. The fires take over. And Murdoch was the cause of that again. He was clear over on the right wing, bothering somebody. And then when Mielbach got the ball on the left wing, he still got over there and gave him trouble. Great anticipation. Really a great feel for the game. Well, so far an extraordinary performance by Murdoch as he drives right through everybody. Misses the layup. Muehlbach. Finds Womack. Has to hang a little longer. And the tip in by Mills. Well, Mills just having a super, super game. And Arizona's really needed him. He's got 13. Muehlbach, 6. And that's really the scoring for Arizona. On the other side of the coin, Murdoch with 12. And Watts with six. Turner ends up with it. His shot won't go. Covered nicely underneath, however. And the shot. Now a screen down, Coach, I believe. Oh, great. By Tony Turner. Yeah, Smith uh, really did a great job getting that board. He's 6'4", the number four guard for Arizona. And he had great inside position on Campbell at 6'7". And when he was able to come down with that crucial rebound, others, otherwise Campbell was able to put it right back in for an easy two. There's Casey Schmidt. It will be at the line for the Wildcats. Schmidt, who leads Arizona in three-point field goal percentage, although he's shot six times so far, he's hit four of them. A number of substitutions for both teams as Reeves comes back into the lineup for Arizona. And back in, amongst others, Troy Brown for the Friars. Schmidt makes his first shot. The Wildcats extend the lead again to six points with 4.44 remaining in the first half. Well, Providence has played eight players, rotating those eight. And they could use those other three at home to get a little more depth. But they're doing great with the, with the eight rotation. Arizona has played uh, ten players already in the ballgame. Wildcats, uncharacteristically, do not press after the second main free throw. Although the Wildcats have been shooting pretty well from the line today. They are 9 of 11 from the free throw line. Providence shooting 50%, 4 of 8 so far. Here's Forbes working against Schmidt. Rooks. A little bit loud as he came down with that one. Rattling like a tiger. Schmidt. When Providence has had to get everything inside. Arizona has been now getting a little help outside as well as a strong inside. So they've had a little better balance in both phases. Providence, if they don't get the break or the up-tempo, easy basket, it's been tough for them. They didn't rely on the threes. Forbes. The Watts run a little bit of the weave out here. Forbes again. They go inside to Murdoch, working on Reeves. And he draws the foul. 
What Providence did on that series was put Murdoch into the post against Reeves. at 6-3 against 6-2. Gets Mills up, up with the ball, and Reeves looks like maybe he got a hand on it. Another New York City kid or Easterner playing against his Eastern buddies. Murdoch back on the line. Very good free throw shooter. Shoots 88% from the line. 34% from three-point range and 46 from field goal range. Well, he hits one from the line. That makes it an eight-point Arizona advantage, 38-30. 3.44 remaining. Coach Olson, a tad bit concerned right now. Again, Murdoch 13-14. And with Mr. Murdoch making his two free throws, we're going to take a timeout. 3.44 remain. The Wildcats have a seven-point edge at McHale Center. They put Murdoch in the post the last couple of times down the floor, and that's really their best inside offense. Ree is working on Forbes. Now they send over to Schmidt, guarded by Murdoch. That's an interesting matchup. The sophomore Schmidt against somebody like Eric. Rooks to Reeves from three. And that works. Reeves missed two uh, earlier shots, maybe a little easier than that as far as distance. The Arizona ball inside and then back outside for unmolested threes. That's a little easier to hit those and those threes with everybody on you. Watts gets it over into the corner. The shot missed by Brown. Howard's followed by Sane. Providence now just a pretty uh, one-man press with Forbes. Mills into Rooks. Rooks turns, puts it up, but a foul. That's a block. Three, four on the way up. Fouls on Troy Brown, another freshman from Lynn, as we mentioned, Lynn, Massachusetts. The Arizona coaching staff in conference. Well, Schmidt getting a lot of playing time here in the second half. Arizona guards under quite a bit of pressure. Muehlbach uh, and Hathi. Muehlbach comes in replacing Reeves. Khalid takes a chair for a few moments. Talk about the tempo of this game. Rooks makes his second shot. 42-33. Wildcats up by 9. 2.15 to go. You wonder now about the suspensions. How it will have an impact on this game as these teams wear. I think foul-wise it might have an impact. I don't know about conditioning. Uh, Providence looks like they're in pretty good shape. They're rotating eight players. They get it inside to Brown. Nice move underneath. It won't go. They're going to charge a foul on Rooks. He doesn't like the call. Good penetration by Murdoch. That's what's impressed you about the Providence team. Very good penetration by Watts, Murdoch, and Forbes, and then kicking off. So oh, what? A high post rub right here, and then just as the... Big guy, Rooks goes over to help. Brown slides along the baseline, but Rooks bothers him enough to keep him from getting the shot away. Well, you can see Rooks' point as he comes out now. He'll put Stokes back into the ball game for shot. Sophomore, Ed Stokes. Well, if both these teams were full strength, they would match up really well as far as uh, depth is concerned, because both teams like to play a lot of people. Providence, because of the style of play they play, Arizona pretty much... Uh, just because they've had the opportunities to get ahead and blow out people much of the season. Brown makes his second free throw. Schmidt to Stokes. He has trouble hanging on, and it's off of Ed. Out of bounds to Turner in Providence. Again, 10 turnovers for Arizona in the half. As a coach, you'd like to have your team uh, about 13 or 14 a game, which Arizona was last year. And right now, they're on a 20 turnover pace. And that's really where they've been in much of the season. Murdoch working against Schmidt. Probably Casey's toughest assignment since he's been here, and he loses him. You know, Schmidt is the biggest guard that Arizona has at 6'4 or 5. They've tried everybody on Murdoch. Now, this is a bigger player. Can play him a little looser and still maybe bother his shot. So Arizona's tried everything to contain Murdoch. They've held him to, what, 14 points here in the, with a minute to go in the half. He's been averaging uh, well over that, 37 in his last outing, but he's averaging, what, 23.2. So he's well on his pace to 
average that. The free throws have been a bugaboo for him. He's been very, very good at the line, but not today. Eric misses the first one. He did not like that. Upset with himself, he ran out of the circle. He averaged 15 points a game last year. Well, he misses both ends. Womack with the rebound. Mills looking inside, has it taken away by Watts. Arizona turns it again. Providence with their quick personnel. Two-pointer on the way by Turner, it's good. They've got some big kids, six, seven, or eight, that shoot the perimeter shot very, very well. They felt going into the game with Campbell, a six, seven, playing the three spot for the first time today. Foul now at the other end after the good shot by Turner. He has a foul charged to his account. 32 on the It'll be his second foul. Providence, and as a matter of fact, the Wildcats have both exceeded the 10 foul limit, so two shots on all of these. Stokes will go to the line. Rick Barnes, the youngest coach in the Big East Conference. What a story about how he broke into coaching. <laughs> You're right, very interesting. This is his third year at Providence, had two NCAA teams. 17 and 12 and 18 and 12 his last two years. That's pretty good in that league. 18 and 11 and 17 and 12. And in the NCAA both years, only Syracuse and Georgetown can make that same claim. They're picked to finish eighth this year at the Big East. This is a pretty good basketball team. Stokes makes a second one. They've already lost one game. Boston College beat him at BC Rick, last week. Rick Barnes wanted the job so bad. He was working late nights for UPS shot good by Forbes. That makes it a 43-38. Providence has cut a sizable Arizona lead of late. We'll talk about Rick Barnes at halftime as we get towards the end. Murdoch punched it out of box hands. A little harassment there. Good, good quick hands. The man of steel he's known as. Yeah, it has nothing to do with uh, iron or oars of any kind either, or Pittsburgh. That's a man who's thievery. A five-point Arizona lead with 34 and change remaining, 34 seconds. I still get a kick. It's been around for a while now, but there are 34.6 seconds remaining in the half. Othic hands again. Almost kicked that off Othic's knee. 34, play night, go good. Okay. Arizona playing for Chris, one you, shot. Chris, now. you can't leave him. With the lead himself. they have. You can't leave him. Back it up. All right. You got to stay with him. You can hear the coaches screaming. Everybody just sitting around watching these kids. Yeah. Coaches get a chance to coach now. I'm sure you're going to see Optic. Here's the play set up for Mills for Arizona. It's Optic through the middle instead. There's a foul. I believe the foul will be called on Troy Brown. Where's on the set up a play to get the ball, really, to uh, Mills to go one-on-one, -on -one, but he was not open, and Optic had a good chance to rub his man off the high post, and, and when that opened up even further, he took it right down the lane to the basket, and got what you want. Get on the foul line or get your shot with five seconds to go. Optic misses the free throw. The foul was actually assessed to Chris Watts. I think he's only shooting 58% from the line. He's just too good a shooter for that. But here he is only on the line, first time in the ballgame. Makes the second free throw. Mulebach checks in for Othic. Othic on the bench, Arizona. A little confusion by Providence right now. Who's going to bring the ball across? No mistake about it now. They want to get a shot. And they lose it. Romack turns, tosses it over the backboard, and the half has come to a close. But I can guarantee you it's been an exciting one, as Arizona has a six-point advantage over the a third place finish. They were fifth last year, but did make the NCAA playoffs. The Big East has, on occasion, had six teams in the NCAA playoffs, so you can still finish fourth or fifth in that league and still get the NCAA playoffs. I suppose in recent years, the Providence team of, what, three years ago, where Coutinho took to the final four, played this way, up-tempo game, a lot of threes, and the good pressure defense. Well, the crowd's up, as is custom here for the second half, although I, I won't get say that they'll be up that long watching how Providence has played so far today. Against Marathon Oil, they're up for like four or five minutes before Marathon scored in the second half. The Wildcats take the ball out of bounds. Here's Mulebach. 
Brooks finds Williams alone underneath, and he lays it in. Arizona by 8, 46-38 to get things underway in the second half. Well, great patience by Arizona. Rita ran their offense tough and got the ball inside to use their great height advantage. Simpkins misses inside. Williams with the rebound. That's really the first inside shot problems has had. Simpkins at 6'9". A lot of people feel he's going to be a number one draft choice before his career is over. Williams pumps it with the left hand. Won't go. Murdoch with it for Providence. Arizona starts with Rooks rather than Womack this hand. Simpkins drives on Rooks. Ends up at a dead end alley. Williams with a steal. And out of bounds to Providence. There's not too many big men that are going to go diving around after a loose ball like that. Williams happy to do so. I think in the last three ball games, a big difference in the Brian Williams' play has been this kind of aggressive play on defense. Very intense. Good foot position on defense. Knocking the ball away. Shot miss. A little indecision there on the court. Rooks tied up. And there'll be a jump. Well... What well, used to be a jump ball, Campbell and Rooks on the floor, and the possession is to Providence. Well, a lot of good aggressive play. I think both coaches are going to be pleased with the kind of intensity and aggressiveness that their teams have shown in this ball game. This conference play gets ready to begin. This is the way you want to play it. Murdoch thought about it. Mulebach came from behind and holds him up. Three-pointer won't go. And Williams controls it. They find Mills underneath. Puts it in. Othick got his hand on the inbound pass. And the Arizona coaching philosophy, you know, really feel that first five minutes of the half, second half, is important. And they've really been intense here in the first two minutes. Murdoch goes underneath to Simpkins, and he's fouled by Williams. Mercy Murdoch doing uh, maybe his, his reputation coming into this ball game. He's really a three-point shooter. But we've seen him drive and penetrate more here today and kick it off. He's done a great job of uh, that phase of the ball game. If he could complement that or hit some trees along with that, then you can see how tough he can be. But Arizona's guards are really even making him put the ball on the floor and penetrate. They aren't giving him the threes at all. Simpkins can't hit the first one. Second team all Big East in the preseason. Was the Big East rookie of the week in the first week of the season. It's pretty good to make the Big East team and he hasn't even played a game yet. So he's uh, rated very high by everybody who's watched him play. Hoffick to Williams, right back out to Milbach, back to Hoffick. And you see how quick the Providence defense dropped. Hoffick tried to drive against Simpkins and he draws a foul. I think Othick, fortunate to draw a foul on that one. Well, that's a pretty big ground area in there. Keeps it up, and Matt moves it around a little bit. He's able to pick up the foul. Almost gets the basket as well. Third foul now, charged to Dickey Simpkins. From Fort Washington, Maryland. Othick, two for three now from the line today. He hasn't had a lot of free throws. He's only 7 for 12 going into this ball game, and now he's had three here tonight, or this afternoon, I should say. Three of four. Arizona leads by 11, their biggest lead, 50-39, with just under 18 minutes remaining. As Arizona the changes their defense again. David drops back into his own. Well, the Wildcats can show you different looks defensively, as well as anybody. Across the world pass. Watts from three. Won't go. Rooks controls. Finds Mills. Mills one-on-one -on -one behind the back, and it's taken away. I think a good call. Looks like he picked it up when he went behind his back. Tell you what, Dick Tomey might want to look at this if he's looking for quarterbacks. We'll take another look at that pass. Good outlet. Campbell. Watts into Simpkins. Dickey can't make the play. He's fouled. 
Here we go. Let's take one more look here at this. Uh, I guess you call this a down and out. Here's Rooks at quarterback. Fires to his receiver. Completed for the first down. And Mills, after that, goes back to basketball and gets called for double dribble. Well, he kind of, when he went around behind his back, he kind of went from hand to hand, which is carrying the basketball. Good call by the official who was in front of him and really didn't see that thing behind his back. Dickie Simpkins again at the line. Trying to get Providence within 10. He does. Providence now, last couple of possessions down the floor, has done a good job of getting the ball into the post from the point position. They run a series, they run a pass through, and then back to the point, and then inside to Simpkins. 6'9 freshman. And Dickey makes both of them. We have a substitute coming in for Providence as Troy Brown replaces Simpkins. Mills. Offit. Goes inside to Mills. And the foul. What a pass by Offit. And a great weak side cut by Mills coming across. We see behind the screen there. Just flashes into the open spot. You need a sixth sense to pass like that or some great peripheral vision. He's got both. What was his assist ratio is way up over last year. He's looking for it much more. Not trying to score as much. Williams cans it. Arizona extends it back to 52-41, 16-50 remaining in the game. And Williams with 15. He's really shot well. I don't know what his percentage is, but he hasn't missed many shots. Mills controls it and brings it into the court. Front court for the Wildcatchers. Mulebach from three. Ball controlled by Marquis Spragg. Murdoch wants to go all the way himself. Throws it up. Can't draw the foul. A little bit rugged underneath the board down there. Off it goes to Mulebach. Mulebach can't make the layup. Murdoch controls. That's for two. And it's good by Brown. Yeah, three quick possessions, just up and down with no shots or no baskets. There's Mills. Mills misses Williams. Williams does control eventually. And then the foul. Mills had a shot to really give uh, Williams an open shot at the basket, but threw just behind him enough to break his rhythm. You know, a lot of people say that when you play Arizona, you need to play an up-tempo game and, and get the run up and down the court. Now, Arizona can play that way. Uh, you're hopeful that you as an opposition can play better that way than they can. And then the other thing you're hoping is that you can keep their big men in the middle of the floor, running back on defense and running down on offense and really never getting all the way back on defense or all the way back on offense. So you get an advantage, and they are at a disadvantage not being able to use their big men under either basket. I still think that's the way you want to play them, much like Providence is playing. But the, when you play that way, you still got to shoot well in order to, to win the basketball game, and Providence hasn't done that in this ball game. Isn't that the truth? All the strategy in the world, if you can't make the basket, it doesn't work. Womack covers, can't put it in. And a foul on Wayne. A good strong offensive board by Wayne Womack, 6'8", who's playing more at that strong forward position, or the forward position for Arizona, than he is at the wing position. Although right now in the ball game, that's where he is with Mills at the wing. All right, we have a timeout. There's 15 minutes, 55 seconds remaining. And so we move on to Christmas. That qualifies. I wonder why Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, no one ever recorded a Christmas song about the Arizona cheerleaders. I think there's something's been overlooked. Well, 14%. Uh, Arizona at 43, not, you know, a lot better, a lot where they'd like to be, but uh, Providence really needs to shoot the basketball better. Threes or twos, whatever it might be. Watts to Murdoch. Thought about a three-point shot. Back to Forbes. Only three threes in the first half. And you're saying, Coach, the average nine. The average make them nine a game. Oh, there's one of them. Murdoch hits. What? Baskets good. A foul underneath, away from the ball. Three, four on the rebound. Push. Baskets good. So the basket's good. They put a foul on the board against Tony Clark. Well, they no, could be a Clark. Clark's not in the ball game. The referee said 34. He must have meant Mulebach 24. Yeah, it was on Providence, right? Okay. 
Williams. And he makes Thank you for straightening that out. It was a little confusing. Well, Williams is two for two in the first half, and he hasn't missed a shot in the second half, so he's really having a great game percentage-wise. Well, Murdoch makes it two in a row from three-point land. 54-49, and the Friars are within five. That's what they got to have. He's got his 20. As we indicated, his average is 23, 37 on his last outing. He's broken Mills. his career scoring record each ball game the last three times. Mills threw it away. Bragg with the interception. Murdoch to the other end against Mills. Waits goes up underneath. No foul. Blocked by Womack. Out of bounds to Providence. And Dickie Simpkins back into the lineup for Providence replacing Brown. And Providence only 31% for the ball game. Now Arizona at 50. Shot, still within a shot at the ball game. You know, the 49 as well as they shoot threes. Boy, a couple more. They could get, get up there in a hurry. Williams takes a rest as Rooks comes back into the ball game. Providence, Brown, a watch to brag. Murdoch with Offick. Forbes. And Offick now covering Murdoch. About six, one and a half, not as strong or as big. Murdoch bottled up. Watts helps him out. At least Forbes alone. Can't hit it. Womack. And they got Milbach. Underneath. That's good. Boy, oh, excellent defense by Arizona in that last series that results not only in a blocked shot, but also a basket for Arizona. Bragg draws a foul, presumably on Womack, but we've been fooled before. No, it is on Wayne. It's interesting, the wrong player sometimes reacts. <laughs> well, before the shot, so Providence will get the ball out of bounds underneath. But Providence has made a change at halftime. They're getting the ball inside much better. Well, they went inside to Murdoch that time on the out of bounds play. And they pick up the two by Murdoch. 56-51, a five-point Arizona lead, 13.53 to go. And we have a foul on Forbes now before the ball is brought in bounds. Two, zero, too much. So that means Arizona will pick up about 15 feet or so. I'm sure we'll see a lot of free throws shot before this ball game. There's 13 minutes, both teams at five and four now as far as off to Mulebach, Mulebach to Womack, Womack is fouled as he goes to the hoop by, let's see, there were a couple of fires in the neighborhood. It looked like Simpkins probably, yeah, that's four on him if it is, number 42. It is on Simpkins, good ball movement by the Wildcats as they get it inside to Womack, and then you see Simpkins' hand just took a big chunk out of Womack's right wrist. Simpkins now with four fouls. He will probably take a rest real soon as we see him heading toward the bench. He does. In for him is Tony Turner. So they give up two inches in that exchange due Providence. Well, with 13 minutes to go, uh, they've already got some people in foul trouble and they could come quick now with the type of game it is. Womack hits. a little walk, a stroll in the park. Trent Forbes. A turnover for the Wildcats. It's getting a little heated out there. I think this will be a good game for the Wildcats and their fans alike to get ready for the Pac-10 season. Unlike the games played here against Western Illinois, Long Beach State at all. Here's Offick. Guarded by Forbes. Mulebach. Rooks leaves it and it somehow kicks back out of the key to Offick. Wildcats get a break. Rooks hangs it, puts it in. What a great spin and step in move, as we call it. Using that big body and a big stride to the basket. Turner walks. Two consecutive traveling calls against the Friars. Now, they wear the black and white uniforms because that is the color of the Dominican 
order of priests who run the school. Look at the turnovers now. They're a little bit better. Yeah, they're even at the half. They're three and three going in here the first eight minutes of this half. Othick breaks the press by finding Williams. He goes to Rooks and throws it away. I imagine Rooks was going to try to break the floor. If he had Luke, gone Luke, to the basket Luke. uncontested. They find Murdoch. Bottom of the circle won't go. He gets his own rebound, of course. Somehow he threads the needle through a bevy of Arizona arms and picks up the two. He can throw it up there. He's got you know, good body management skills and uh, very good control and good touch. Some unorthodox shot. You know, a guy who's going to score 37 in a game or in a game has to shoot those kind of shots. Sky hook by Rooks. His first two baskets of the game. The last two possessions. Turner from three. Won't go. Mills. Wildcats lead it by nine. Milbach. I wonder if Matt, when the last time Matt saw the basket was on that drive. Well, Matt's got eight points in the ball game, and most of those games have been a result of transition for Matt Muehlbach. Down that left wing, he's the two guard now as Matt Othick plays a point. And he comes down that left wing all the time, and here they get it ahead to him, and he's been very good at finishing the shot off here, at least getting a foul, if not getting the basket, which he did on that particular occasion. Well, you make the point, Coach, that it was a heads-up play. He did not have a shot. He didn't even have a chance to look at the basket, but he had presence to pick up the foul as he makes his first free throw or just get the ball up on the basket because he had Rooks and uh, Williams following him down there and if it bounces around on the basket, one of those big guys can put it back in if he misses them. Saw Fred Campbell come into the ball game for Tony Turner. Campbell, 6'7", so uh, an even trade as far as height goes. And he can play in the perimeter. He's out of Midland Junior College, a very good junior college player. Athletic. Most of these Providence's guys are very athletic players. Good team quickness. Arizona with an 11-point margin, 12.06 remaining in the game. Watts from three, no. Offic, nice little spin move there. Milbach works it into Rooks. Tied up from behind, and they call a foul, I believe, on Bragg. And Bragg, I tell you what, I would not mess with Richie Ballesteros. I would not say anything to that man. Except hello, Merry Christmas, how are you, and things like that. Well, he's got four, Simpkins has got four in that front line. That, uh, Providence is probably going to take a beating in the next, uh, still nine minutes to go in the ball game. You know, of all the sports, they talk about it in football uh, primarily, and, and uh, doesn't come up usually in baseball, but intersectional contests. We heard a lot about the refereeing that the Wildcats encountered down in the Southeast Conference. Here comes Providence out to the West Coast. They get uh, these referees. At what point do you standardize college basketball? Well, you don't. And uh, you're going to read the same thing in the papers tomorrow that you read in the Arizona papers after the LSU game. How can you win on the road, you know, when the officials don't call the ball? Watts somehow saved it. What a play. Campbell controls it. But Watts, this is the most difficult game there is to officiate. It's constant motion. You know, whether you call something or don't, it's always judgment. Whether something's called or whether something is not called, the official makes a determination. So every maneuver, every play, every bounce of the ball. Oh, are three officials enough? I know that was controversial when they went to three. Watts to Murdoch from three. Williams with the rebound to Offit. Cats with an 11-point advantage with 11 minutes remaining in the game. Well, it's been a long time since Providence has scored. Rooks threw it away. The pass was intended for Mills, and now a foul on Brian Williams. Said that Williams more or less threw a shoulder into somebody. I think that's four on Brian, too, so... Uh, Brian Williams with nine minutes to go, so he's probably out of the ball game for a while. Well, as soon as you say that, Ed Stokes comes into the game. Williams out. You are correct, Coach. Williams now in foul difficulty with four. And then we saw Murdoch again anticipating right in the passing lane to pick off that pass as Murdoch comes up with uh, 
his fourth fifth steal of the game. All right, 11 minutes and one second remaining. The Wildcats lead it by 11. We have some people in foul jeopardy right now, a couple from both teams. Most notably for the Wildcats, Brian Williams, Vicki Simpkins for Providence with four. Both of them are resting right now. There you see them. Brooks has three. Bragg has four. And again, Providence is three players short. One of them a starter. They are suspended for fighting against Rhode Island. These are just joining us. Even the other two played a lot of minutes. Gilbach with the interception. He played that like Murdoch's been playing for Providence. Samuels reverse it in. Bad offensive play and then compounded by bad defensive play. Forbes hits the three-pointer in answer, but what an extraordinary pass. Here's Mulebach alone, and it's batted out by Murdoch, and they say that he tended the goal. Sixty-eight fifty-six, ten twenty-two remain at McHale Center. Super transition by Arizona. Providence scores, and Arizona comes right back and gets a layup after a field goal. That's the toughest way to score there is. And uh, that really indicates you're not getting back in transition defense when that happens to you. How about Offick and his assist today, Coach? What's the count now? Well, I'm not sure, but he's been averaging 6.6 .6 a game. Much higher than last year. Forbes working against Mulebach. They get it from Murdoch. Murdoch over Offick. Boy, he's something. And Matt Offick was all over him. Yep. He really was on him. Matt's really become a good defensive player for Arizona here in this past year. Much stronger. Offick thought about three. Good coverage. He goes inside to Rooks. Off the glass, no. A little war there between Stokes and Watts. Forbes. Murdoch from the corner, and a foul will be charged on Offick. Well, Matt, Matt Offick is really up into Murdoch. As soon as he gets the basketball, he's really forced him to drive, and of course they can afford to do that because Arizona's got some great size and help inside if the guy does get by you. But Murdoch can do so well as he can pull up and shoot the jumper five or six feet from the basket. He doesn't have to go all the way and battle those big guys underneath. Khalid Reeves checks into Arizona's lineup again, replacing Offick. Offick leaves with three fouls. This is Forbes. Dishes it. Brown has it walked aside. And a mule by. Reeves. You see Reeves over on the left wing for Arizona. He's playing the off guard or shooting guard. He has not played that position much here in the preseason. They've been using it as a point. But now Arizona's using their experienced guards at the point, Mulebach or. Mulebach went around the neighborhood and found Stokes. <laughs> Almost completed a full circle at the other end. Murdoch misses the layup. And a foul is charged. Well, Mulebach for Arizona is really having a good basketball game. 12 points for him. Watch Matt Mulebach. He walk a semicircle around the court, and then he finds Stokes open for business. Offick checks into the ball game. Mulebach will now rest. And that means Offick will play the point for Arizona, and Reeves will go to that off-guard position. So they're using Reeves to spell Offick and Mulebach, letting Mulebach and Offick play the point for Arizona. Probably that's going to be their pattern the rest of the year. Troy Brown misses the free throw. Offick has seven assists in the ballgame so far, as we indicated to you. He's averaging right there in the year, 6.6, .6, so he's right on his average. Offick. Stolen by you know who. Impressive. Steals a basketball, dribbles the length of the court, scores it two. His name is Eric Lloyd Murdoch. Write it down, put it in your wallet. In about two years, he'll be leading the NBA in a lot of categories. He's really kind of blossomed. He really wasn't a very good shooter. Mills from three. But you can see that he can penetrate and shoot it. 
kick it off. He can shoot the three, although he's probably not shot the threes as well today as he would like to. He does everything. After the extraordinary layup, after the steal, Murdoch comes back, hits the three-pointer. Providence in business, 10 points down with 7.45 remaining in the game. Rooks with a spin move up and in. 75-63 in favor of Arizona. There's Murdoch again. It's good. And he's shaking up now. He's hobbling a little bit. And their transition defense by Arizona not very good. As Arizona comes down and gets a three and very vulnerable to a quick basket. The ball batted by Watts. And a foul will be charged. I want to make sure on Chris Watts, right. He shoved it. It was after he made the block of the pass, he shoved him. That was uh, the call just rendered by the referee. Uh, Richie Ballesteros indicated that's what happened. They were both going for the basketball. Now, I saw Eric Murdoch rip his right knee just to make that his left knee just a moment ago. We'll see if he's hurting. It doesn't look all that comfortable out there. Chris Mills will go to the line for the Wildcats. Well, Arizona's going to go back and play some zone now. It'll be interesting to see if maybe they match up on uh, Murdoch and try to play him, uh, box him and play him straight up. But they're going to play some zone after these free throws. And they've been very successful man-to-man -man against Murdoch, so they're just going to change up and see what happens. Mills makes it an 11-point lead. 7-21 remaining in the game. to the 12 point lead that's where we are 77 65 721 to go it's a dandy stay tuned i'm bill with big news in late night laughs new hot's back new time tired of talking heads and lounge lizards then switch to new hot and give you late night a little color new fun Eric murdoch and some of his work today a steal and he's off to the races. Well, he's always helping. He's anticipating. He knows Arizona's going to the post, so he's leaving his man, that other guard, and getting over in there and getting that passing lane. 33 points. 37 yesterday against Manhattan. Two days ago, that was his career high. Well, he indicated in the last three games, he's broken his career scoring record. 37, he's probably going to break that today. Well, they say he's one of the best guards in the history of the school, and the school that produced people like De Gregorio and others, that's pretty headsy stuff. Arizona now zone, their matchup zone. Trying to extend on Murdoch. I'm sure they'll uh, go. Lock pressure him a little three. bit. Three, he's got it. Well, coach, they're getting close to their nine good. Well, they are. Yeah, after, after three, only three in the first half. A little trap now, defense. Just doing everything on defense. Very quick. Rooks trying to confuse you a little bit. Get you to make some mistakes. Womack with a nice move underneath. The shot won't go. Howard Mills tips it in. Just having a super game. Chris Mills on the foul. And a foul immediately back, I believe, on Womack. It is. No, probably Optic. I don't know. They're both over there. Womack this time. Optic reacted. That's <laughs> you just You don't believe the players anymore, ever. You just wait for the referee to work his fingers down there. Number 14, Arizona Pow Wilds has uh, three players with three, but uh, Providence has two with four. We're down to six minutes to go. Murdoch with 34 points. As we indicated, 36 out of 37 free throws. If he made all these free throws tonight, he'd be up over 37 right now. Murdoch, who still says his biggest achievement in sports was leading his New Jersey high school to a state championship. Makes the free throw. It pulls Providence within nine. Pass to Mills. Taken away by Simpkins. Straight man to man that time. Again, Providence changing their defense. Arizona stays in the zone. No. Nope. Take it back. Just Forbes working with Reeves. Watts. Murdoch and Offick. Reeves came in. I believe Reeves grabbed a hold of his wrist. That's a foul. For Khalid, it will be his fourth foul now. And uh, Providence is one-on-one. -on -one. So right now, when you a guy like Murdoch, boy, you're trying to keep him the ball, you're fouling. There's going to be two points probably from the line. If you ease up on him, it's probably going to be two or three from the perimeter. So the foul situation is a factor for both teams right now. Arizona, the advantage on the big man 
in Providence the advantage on the perimeter with a guy like Murdoch in the shooting situation every time he touches the ball. Reeves is back on the bench and we'll correct ourselves. He has three fouls now. Murdoch at the line. He's becoming automatic from there. 79-71 the score now. So he makes it an eight-point lead for the Wildcats with exactly six minutes remaining in the game. Well, 36 points for Murdoch. With this free throw, he can tie his career record that was set two days ago against Manhattan. And that's what he does with 37. 37 points. All right, Womack brings it into Offic. 1-3-1 half-court trap by Providence. Mills. Way up, Murdoch. Face guarding on that one. Doesn't get the call. However, there is a call after that on Eric. Murdoch, he's a great guy to have in this kind of a defense because he can anticipate cross lobs or anything else. He almost had that pass to Mulebach. His first personal team ball. Barnes wondering out loud. There you see Eric. He is a uh, American Studies major at Providence. I guess American Studies, basketball being an American game, it all fits in. Somehow. Mulebach in the dead silence of Mikhail Center makes the shot. Mulebach's a 76% shooter. Shot over 80% last year. Womack onto the bench now. 13 points for Matt Mulebach. Probably his high for the year. He hasn't really scored a lot for Arizona this year. Doesn't get the second one. Line violation on Simpkins will allow Milbach to take another shot. He's got a free one, and Matt kind of shot it quickly when he saw him break the plane. Well, it makes good with it. So Simpkins provides Milbach an extra shot. Milbach converts it. 81-72. Watts in the front court to Murdoch. I got that. Yeah, thanks. He's just an indicated to us that he broke his career scoring record, and uh, we're aware of that. Uh, I was wondering who you were talking to. It wasn't me. <laughs> well, the sports information guy from Providence came up to make sure we knew that Murdoch had uh, tied the career score, and the scoring record for the building is 41, so he may get that one. Uh, see, it's research in progress. Murdoch with a three-pointer in progress. Does it go? Simpkins follows. It won't go. Watts follows with a rebound. To Forbes. Forbes from three thought about it. No. Puts it in for two instead. To get good offensive board work by Providence to keep them in the ball game. The associate referees here think that he moved with the ball and traveled. No call though. Here's Milbach to Mills. Arizona now using some of the clock. Patience. They need to get a good shot. Get on the foul line. Brooks working against Campbell. Sends it back out to Optic from three. It's good. Murdoch with the reverse. It's slammed down by Rooks. Then he takes another one. Rooks fires. Controlled by Mulebach. Around the back to the basket. It's gone. Oh, a great finish by Matt Mulebach. That's where he's so tough. Well, Matt Mulebach and Sean Rooks combine to get him on their feet, and they are, as the Wildcats have a 12-point lead, 408 remain in the game. We'll be right back. Arizona now pretty much boxing up. You see Matt Optic playing Murdoch man for man. And the other Arizona players playing zone. Murdoch. Hung for three and puts it in. That'll be a four-point play, perhaps. On the push, counted three, going one. The foul is on Williams. Somehow, Murdoch hung. Tossed it in, and now he'll take a shot. Watch again. Uh, looked like he may have moved a tad there, but still an incredible shot. 88-78, he makes it a 10-point game. 41 right now. This could be a record right here. You saw it. 42. 
Al Fleming will be number two in scoring in this building. Off it. Topic again back from Milbach. Here's Mills. Milbach. Arizona going to keep the ball, get it inside, use some time off the clock before they shoot it. Rooks. Mills from three. Walt. Eighty-eight, seventy-nine, two, thirty-three remaining in the game. And the way that Providence has been scoring in spurt today, this one is long from being over. Murdoch sends up a rainbow, and there's a pot at the end of that one. 88-81 with 2.14 remaining. Well, he had to shoot it up to get it over the big guy, so he got the ball up, he shot it on the side. You know, just a great exhibition. Arizona Reed really needs to use the clock. Let's see how much time they ran. 29 seconds last time. They probably shot it a little quick. Murdoch was looking for the steal, went behind the back of Mulebach. Here's Othick from three. Won't go. Forbes controls it for Providence. Underneath, and good. And again, they shot it with 25. I think that's too soon. Bragg with the basket. Another turnover for the Wildcats. The big man, Simpkins. Wildcats need to regroup. 88-83, a five-point lead, a minute and a half to go. Here's Murdoch to Forbes. Providence cuts it to a three-point lead. There's a minute 22 remaining, and don't you dare go wandering off. We'll be right back. Hey, two remain, a three-point Arizona lead. The Providence Friars of the Big East, and they underline it big. Well, they play a lot of games like this, and right now Arizona has not done a good job with their late game offense. They shot the ball the last three times with 29 seconds. 25 and 25. They really need to use the clock right now. Romack to Rooks. Murdoch went after Offit, and he has a foul called against him. Now you begin to wonder about Murdoch. That is second to personal foul, so that probably will not play to this thing unless they go overtime. Murdoch today has done everything. Five steals, six rebounds. 12 of 15 from the free throw line, 3 of 8 from the three-point land, 14 of 31. He's got 44 points, and now he is the number one scorer for one game in this building. Big free throws for Arizona. They're all two from now on because of the 10 foul rule, the new rule we get to see go into effect. Hoffick. Here's Forbes. Minute 12 to go. Watts. Murdoch. Murdoch looking for a foul, and he got it from Yulbach. Oh, that's a tough call. Well, he's so strong, and he gets his body close to you. He can wedge into you there, and that's what he did. He really picked up the foul, created the contact, and that puts him on there for two, and that would give them a Providence a chance to call timeout now if they make both these. And with some great pressure, they're still in the ball game. So Murdoch with 44 points. The old record belonged to Al Fleming, 41 in this building. A four-point Arizona lead. A minute and sec six seconds remain. They still need a possession or a uh, score, so whether it's a three or two, doesn't make too much difference. This one's kind of important right here. All right, a three-point game. Mills, full court pressure. Over to Mulebach. And a foul on Murdoch again. That'll be his third. Trying to do a little bit more than usual now. And what is usual for Murdoch is exceptional. I think uh, Mulebach, too, made a good, strong move with him. He's got a good, strong body, and he's got a good, strong dribble, and that time he was able to get that ball to the side of Murdoch and then use his body to wedge himself down the floor. So now the free throw has become kind of important for Arizona. 70% shooter right here. 
Guy you'd like to have at the line, experienced senior. Well, all you heard was the net. 90-86, less than a minute. Matter of fact, they are a half a second less than a minute. All right, 91-86. Forbes, Murdoch, working against Offit. They go underneath the Simpkins, he's fouled. And that's really a, what you'd consider a bonus for Providence now, stopping the clock and getting a chance to take two shots. And if they make him, it gives him a chance to put the full court press on. We don't have assists in here for Murdoch, but you know, as much as a scorer as he is, he's really a complete basketball player. He's given the ball up when he's needed to, and there he had a chance maybe to shoot for a three, but he got it inside. All right, I'm going to lose the coach. He's getting ready for the post game, so we're working Han Solo. Simpkins at the line. A big miss with a five point Arizona advantage, 51 and one-tenth seconds remaining. They're going to change some folks, Campbell and Western back into the lineup replacing Simpkins and Bragg for Providence. The full court press on again, 51 and a tenth seconds remaining. Arizona with a four-point lead. Mills. And the foul immediately. They bring in a man who can give one. Well, it's actually Watts. Chris Watts, the senior from Connecticut. That is his third foul. And with the ball now into the Arizona court, Providence makes some changes again. Forbes goes out. Simpkins comes back in, as does Bragg. Who would have thought? The Wildcats going after their 52nd consecutive home win. There was a lengthy streak broken yesterday in Norman, Oklahoma. Mills. Arizona with the advantage today by plenty as far as free throws go. Mills with a chance to help out a big way, in a big way. Here he does. 93-87, six points. 44 seconds remaining. This is Forbes. Watts to Murdoch. Off the leg of Eric Murdoch, out of bounds to Arizona. Western back into the ball game. They've got fouls to give for the full court press in case you're wondering about the strategy here. Simpkins is out of the game. He's got four fouls. Lothic has it brought in, and the foul is given by Forbes. That'll be his fourth, so he will no longer have that option of giving the foul if he wants to continue. Well, interestingly enough, Eric Murdoch, who has been creating turnovers all day, turns it over in a critical situation for Providence, and that may make a huge difference in the conclusion of this one. 34 and 8 10 seconds remaining. Offic wastes no time. The Providence has had to foul and take their chances on free throw, and Arizona, again, with pressure, has been able to convert. Two big free throws. Simpkins brings it in. Murdoch. From three. Nope. That's off it. And it appears Arizona will make it 52. The foul is on Forbes. And that's it for Forbes today. So Trent Forbes ties up Chris Mills. That cost him his eligibility. It's been a great ball game for Arizona fans, and that's pretty just what you have to do late in the ball game is to take your chances on the fouls, and hopefully they're going to miss some. On the road, you probably have a little better chance than you do playing somebody at home. Arizona's been very good at the line these last eight free throws. Well, 
the time taken right now as Trent Forbes says goodbye to his colleagues on the court one by one. I'm impressed by Forbes. You know, six one a sophomore and had to move in and be a starter for them when they lost their starting point guard. Very, very good as Arizona gets two free throws here on the intentional foul, and then we'll get the ball out of bounds. All of a sudden, with 18 seconds and a 96.87. Well, that's what'll happen to you late in the ball game. You just have to take your chances, and in this case, it was a plus for Arizona and a minus for Providence. Mills makes them both. Make it 97, 87, 18 seconds remain, and all of a sudden, the Wildcats should they can a three-pointer score 100 points again. Well, Mills, 28 points. He hit 29 against Notre Dame, and Notre Dame in that great performance. But again, he's risen to the occasion when they've needed him in the big tough ball games. Chris Mills has really been tough. Offic to Rooks. 15 seconds remain. Back to Mulebach. To Womack. 99-87. And the Wildcats will make it 52 in a row. Murdoch closes it, misses it. The game today, 99-87, one of the best games of Miguel Center thus far this season. Arizona extending their record to 8-1 and one on the year. And Providence falls to 7-2. and two. Lou Olson and his Wildcats now have won 52 consecutive games here at Miguel Center. And Eric Murdoch and the Providence Friars made this last one ever so exciting. Getting set up for coach right now. Our player of the game is Chris Mills. Coach will have him underneath the basket in just a moment. Let's take one more look at Chris. Gets the pass from Mulebach. How about this reverse layup? Just one of many fine plays made by Chris today. And I think coach has got him all saddled up, ready to go. You ready, coach? Yeah, we're ready. Okay. Our player of the game, Chris Mills. With 28 points, it seems like uh, good, tough ball games. You come forward and have uh, great ball games. Notre Dame and uh, Arkansas are now here tonight in Providence in a great ball game. Any, you got a great start. Is that important to you? Yes, yeah, so, uh, it's a big start for us. We need to come out and play hard, and I need to start playing consistent. If I can do that, then uh, I'm sure we'll win a lot of games. All right, how about comparing programs a little bit? You came out of Kentucky, philosophies, type of offense, defense. Any similarities in the programs? Well, uh, both of the coaches stress defense a lot. Uh, when I was down at Kentucky, that was one of the main things focused for us. We didn't have too much offensive power. But down here, we, we can go defensively, play well, and we have a lot of firepower, and that's one of the big things for us to win the, thing, the whole thing this year. All right, how about com commenting on Eric uh, Murdoch? 6'2 guard, just had a Super Bowl game, did a lot of things. Uh, your comment, your impressions. Well, Eric was a roommate of mine down at the Olympic trials, and, you know, he didn't play as well down there, but he came down here and proved that he was one of the best players in the country, and he came out, and hey, I don't think i ever seen anybody have 40-some points against us at our house, but along we won the game, that was the most important thing. He set the scoring record for McHale, but again, congratulations to you on a great ball game. Keep Thank that consecutive streak going. Thank Good you. luck to you in the tournament. Thank you. Back to you, Dave Sitton. Thank you, Coach, and congratulations, Chris Mills. Mills leads the Wildcats to their 52nd consecutive win at McHale Center, just the first non-conference loss for Providence this year. We'll have more from McHale Center right after these messages. Bon Voyage would have been very happy, uh, would have been very helpful, I'm sure, yesterday to Providence as they took 12 hours to get out here. We talked about that earlier. But when they came out here, boy, did they come to play. I mean, Arizona just... Uh, basically got by this one when you consider they were uh, very much, uh, the game was in jeopardy up into the final minute. Well, it was, you know, well contested or very competitive basketball game, and I think the kind of game that Arizona needed. Up-tempo, and I'm sure teams are going to try to play that way against them, the better teams in the Pac-10, like UCLA and, uh, and Oregon State, and uh, probably Arizona State will try to create that kind of a tempo. Arizona responded well to it. I think the great play of uh, Chris Mills, who seems to respond to tough kinds of ball games, and of course he gets to play more in these kind of ball games than he does in those other kind, but I'd say the other thing for Arizona would be the play of Matt Muebach with his 18 points. He's been averaging about seven. His career high at Arizona is 22, but I think they like to see that scoring production from that guard, especially in transition, where he's leading that break and getting some of those tough baskets at the end of transition. I guess so, you, you I, I, excuse me, Coach, for interrupting, but you really can't talk much about this game without one, one more time referring to Eric Lloyd 
Murdoch, the senior from Providence. He's actually from New Jersey, uh, now at Providence, and uh, with his 45 points today, set a new McHale Center record. It had been held by Al Fleming against the University of Detroit back on uh, January 10th, 1976. It was 41 points, so he shattered that by four, and Eric Murdoch will not soon be forgotten here at McHale Center. Don't forget, coming up on Thursday this week, we want you, first of all, to have a very Merry Christmas, and then after that, the Fiesta Bowl Classic returns. Arizona takes on the Pepperdine Waves in their first game. This is Nesson, your ticket to New England sports.